Hi everybody, up next on End of the Day Beer Review, we're going to be looking at the Cape May Brewing Company's Oktoberfest. Check it out. Hi everybody, it's Rich and welcome to End of the Day Beer Review. And today, uh, being that it is October, we are looking at Cape May Brewing Company's uh, Marzen Style Lager. This is their Oktoberfest. And it's coming in at 5.8% ABV. Now, I was in New Jersey, um, I don't know, I guess about a month ago and I picked up a case of this because I really liked it last year. Um, and it's sort of late in October, so you know, a little late to do this review. But I am sort of excited. If you notice up there, I do have a Cape May Brewing Company uh, sign. I have another one on the other side of the bar. Uh, one of my favorite breweries out there, actually two of my favorite breweries are actually located in Cape May, New Jersey. One is Cape May Brewing Company. The other one is Gusto Brewing, which if you've been on the channel before, you've definitely heard me talk about it. Um, <clears throat> So today we're going to be looking at Cape May Brewing Company's uh, Oktoberfest, and it says it is rich and complex, um, smooth and clean, uh, well balanced with a hint of hops presence, um, and it is coming in at 5.8% ABV, it's a 12 ounce can, and brewed and canned by Cape May Brewing Company, Cape May, New Jersey, and wow, it says Philadelphia PI, I did not realize they had a brewing facility in uh, Philly, but that's sort of an interesting thing to uh, to find out here. So let's crack it open. Um, and unfortunately, and it's probably my fault, a little bit too much foam on top. So let's get a little of that foam out. Wouldn't be a beer review without a little bit of a spill. Let's give it that pour, try to be a little gentle. So maybe I can get the head to settle. I normally don't have any issues with overcarbonation on Cape May Brewing Company uh, products. And, and quite honestly, I hope you notice I am using my Cape May Brewing Company uh, glassware. Figured that was the appropriate. I'm getting a really good bready sort of aroma in the bar right now. Um, and if you look, it, it does pour a dark amber, um, you know, uh, almost, it's almost like a, a hint of red, but not really. Um, about a solid finger, maybe finger and a, a half of very, very light head. Um, so a really fine looking beer. Again, I'm getting a sort of breadiness, uh, that yeastiness is coming through. It's got a really nice sort of mellow nose to it. Nothing that's overwhelming, nothing that's going to just scare you away. Um, Yeah, it is. It's it's mostly that breadiness that I'm getting out of this uh, more than anything else. So let's see. Most importantly, has a taste. Yeah, that's a nice beer. That really is. So um, the carbonation really is is spot on with this particular beer because it. Um, it definitely brings the flavor out as it hits the back of your palate and sort of forces it up through the, the sinuses so you really get a good taste. And like I said, the, the nose on this was very bready. Um, you know, in fact, I, I'm thinking almost like a, a good roll or a good like, um, you know, fresh baked like white bread type of aroma to it. Um, and that's how it tastes as well. You're getting sort of that breadiness on the front end of this particular beer. It's really, really nice actually. You're getting a little bit of the yeast, not a tremendous amount. And right on the back end, there's an interesting bitterness. Um, now I'm not a big hops guy. Uh, like that's one of the reasons why I'm not a big IPA fan, but here there's just enough of a hint of those, that sort of hoppy bitterness on the back end to sort of waken, uh, you know, to wake up the taste buds even more. So it's, it is a really, really nice, crisp beer. Now, easy to drink, yeah. I could easily finish this in the course of, let's say, half of a meal. Um, and I would probably go for another one, quite frankly. Uh, now, you know, as far as ABV, this is 5.8%. So for my tastes, this is a little lower in the, uh, the ABV than I normally go for, but it's so crisp and it's so refreshing that I don't mind that trade-off. In fact, 
<coughs> excuse me, I really do enjoy the fact that it sort of cuts through any other flavor in your mouth, sort of cleanses the palate, and leaves it with that sort of like nice, almost sweet aftertaste you get from a really nice, fresh piece of, uh, of bread. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, that yes, I could easily drink in no time flat. Like this, this is easily a beer that you can crush, which is one of the reasons why I picked up a case. I wanted to be able to share it with people and I wanted to be able to have, you know, one or two in an evening. And at five point, what is that? 5.9 or 5.8%, 5.8%. It's not so overwhelmingly boozy that it's going to, um, you know, look, you shouldn't be driving after you have two of these, but it's not going to leave you sort of like incapacitated if you have two of these. So this would be a really, really nice sort of beer to go with uh, any sort of barbecue dinner that I can think of. Let's see what else the can has. It says that it is best paired with hot dogs. Yeah, I could see that. Um, pretzels and cheese. Um, that would be interesting sort of pairing this with a nice cheese. Um, and it does say that it is well balanced with a hint of hops. I got that. Uh, and it's focused on the grain bill of Vienna, Munich, uh, Carmunchen, Pilsen, and Melendolian malts. Uh, I am not sure what those are. Um, and it, it also says that it was um, fermented at a cool 50 degrees, which uh, I'm, I, I thoroughly enjoy the process of tasting beer. I have tried to brew beer um, three times in a Pico brew and not once did that actually work for me and then Pico brew went out of, um, out of business. So I have to say I really appreciate the level of expertise it takes for someone to actually make a good beer. And this is an example of a really, really finely made uh, Oktoberfest. It's really enjoyable, really easy to drink, not super high on the ABV. Um, now, I know that New Jersey is a pain in the neck with getting hold of their beers. They do not ship. So uh, I'm going to say if you happen to be in New Jersey, and I bought this in a Wegmans in New Jersey when I was there, um, I highly, highly recommend that you check out uh, their Oktoberfest while it is still available. I will also say this. Cape May Brewing Company, if you happen to be in Cape May, New Jersey, um, one, you should immediately go to Gusto. Awesome brewery, awesome people there. Um, smaller. Uh, Cape May Brewery has gotten much bigger, has a really nice outdoor sort of sitting area, um, good tastings, uh, nice little do-it-yourself tour through the brewing facility. Uh, just an awesome, awesome little brewery. A little bit more impersonal than what I get at Gusto, but still an outstanding, outstanding brewery. So again, if you're looking for a good Oktoberfest and you happen to be in New Jersey in the next two weeks, I would definitely check out Cape May Brewing Company's Oktoberfest. It is uh, just an excellent beer and I love Cape May Brewing Company. They make a honey porter that I'm really fan, a fan of. They make a coffee stout I'm really a fan of. And this too would be one of those ones that would I be willing to travel the three hours to pick it up? I would be, although it's available in a Wegmans that's about an hour and a half from here. So I would definitely be willing to travel that hour and a half to the Wegmans or a Total Wine in New Jersey because Jersey beers just don't ship to New York, which is really, I think, sort of sad. Anyway, folks, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to drink the rest of this. Um, you all have a good night and I'll see you next time. If you like the uh, review, hit that like button, subscribe, throw a comment in there. If you got an Oktoberfest you think I should try, uh, this is going to come up on Tuesday, I think. And, um, you know, love to hear any recommendations. I'll try to grab them before the month is over. And with that, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.